today we'll take a look at how to create a bolt connection on a splice plate. Here we have an assembly finite element model with two instances of a plate with a half inch diameter hole in it. To create the connection we'll go into the bolt connection command. Here you can see we have several options. We'll select the bolt with nut then we have some options for how we can define the location of the head and the nut. Here we'll select the whole edge as well as the diameter that we'd like the spider to go out to. So here we'll select all of the edges for our head side and then we'll turn on the other splice plate only and select all of the holes for our nut side. Next we'll select the type of shank element that we'd like to use, which will be a C-beam, and our spider connection, which we'll use an RBE2. Let's take a close look at exactly what it created. So here you can see it's created the C-beam for our shank element, and then you can see also that it's spidered out to our spider diameter that we had specified as one inch. Now if we'd like a better delineation of our spider to our washer face, what we can do is put in a mesh control of a mapped hole that will go out to that full inch diameter and we'll specify that with a layer depth and here a number of layers is three. You can see it's automatically put in two layers but once we update our mesh to our new mapped hole mesh control, you can see we have three layers that go out exactly to the one inch. So if we go back to our assembly fem where we have our bolt connection, now you can see we have a nice clean edge where we have our spider diameter. One thing we need to do before we can successfully solve is to specify some physical properties for our shank. So here we'll specify a rod beam section with dimension 1, which is the radial dimension as a quarter inch for our half inch diameter hole. And we'll also specify a material. Now before we can run the model, we also need to make sure that we don't have any assembly label conflicts. So we'll go ahead and automatically resolve any node and element label conflicts. And then we're ready to do our test solve. Here I've already specified a fixed constraint on the left edge of the left splice plate and a load to put the splice plate assembly into bending on the right edge of the right splice plate. So here let's take a look at those results, make sure that it's solved properly. And here you can see the splice plate assembly in bending.